We're back. We're doing another season review. And uh, this time it's going to be a little bit more expansive because uh, today we're looking at a player who's played on five different teams this season. We're looking at Kent Johnson's season at Michigan, his star with the Blue Jackets, and also he's played for Team Canada three times this calendar year. We're talking about all that and more on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked on Blue Jackets. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you all of the news, stories, trials, tribulations, joys, the agonies of uh, your favourite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day, or your first watch of the day, if you're joining me over on YouTube. Locked on Blue Jackets is free and available on YouTube and all podcast platforms there's never going to be a paywall for any locked on product so uh the perfect time to jump on in was probably yesterday but the second best time is right now so uh, we're going to be continuing our season in review today uh we're going to be talking about ken johnson who uh like I said at the top of the show, has technically played for five different teams this season, which seems excessive. Uh, and then you realise that three of them were just different iterations of Team Canada. He likely will be playing for Team Canada again in the summer, uh, just because of weirdness with the cancelled World Juniors tournament. But we'll talk all about that in uh, just a minute. Um, I've been having a lot of fun with these with these reviews, so... Uh, Hopefully, this this one, I think, is one that I've been looking forward to. Um, and this is the one that got the most kind of divisive, di- divisiveness. divisiveness. A lot of people were divided uh, in the Twitter poll that I posted yesterday on what letter grade to give Ken Johnson. So uh, I think let's start off with kind of looking at uh, his college season uh, because he was pretty pretty freaking good uh 37 points in 32 games uh he i believe was fourth on the team he was tied for fourth on the team uh the only players ahead of him were Matty Benares, who was drafted second overall in the same draft uh brendan brisson who was a junior i believe uh luke hughes who just a monster on the diff- on the d line uh he has he was fourth overall in the draft, and then Thomas Bordelow, who was drafted the year previous as well. So, as a as a sophomore, the only players to score more points than him were two guys that were drafted ahead of him, and one guy in his third year at uh, at the University of Michigan. So that seems that seems pretty pretty good. Uh, he had the same amount of points as Thomas Bordalo. He did it in less games. That's the other impressive thing, I think, is that uh, he played less games than basically anyone else on the roster. Um, he played because he left for the World Championships and because he left for the... Not the World Championships. He left for the World Juniors and then he left for the Olympics. He only played 32 games this season. Uh, Owen Power, who joined him on both of those trips, played 33. Um, so he's he's doing really, really good things. He had six points less than Matty Benares, who led the team in scoring in five less games. And he was more than a point-per-game player. So you've got to think, if Ken Johnson is there all season, he's leading the team in scoring. Not a ton of goals. He only had eight goals, 29 assists. But um, I think that bodes... That bodes well for um, the Blue Jackets, honestly, because, and I've talked about this at length, my dream line is uh, just watching Ken Johnson pass to Cole Sillinger all day, every day, every game for the next 10 years. I don't know. Um, and that, I'm not, but people get twitchy when they're like, oh, they've only got eight goals on the season or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not, it's not all about goals. And like, I get that a lot of it is about goals, but I'm really happy with how Ken Johnson is uh, is proceeding in his in his career. Uh, really impressed with his season at Michigan. 
um, saw a stat and then immediately lost it. He, Ken Johnson had uh, 42 games. In 42 games with the University of Michigan Hockey, Ken Johnson hit 50 career points. Uh, he became the quickest Wolverine to do so since Kyle Connor did it in 15-16. That was another super stacked uh, University of Michigan team. He, uh, kid's good, man. And I think something we're going to talk about in uh, in a minute is kind of how, not disappointed, but I feel like his CBJ debut was kind of undershadowed by a different player making his debut at the same time and having not necessarily a, a better debut, but I think a more consistent debut. And, um, you know, obviously we're talking about Nick Blankenberg, who signed the same day as as his teammate, former captain uh, of the University of Michigan, finished his senior year and uh, signed as a, an undrafted free agent with the Blue Jackets. Um we're going to talk about a lot about Nick Blankenberg later on. When we do his episode of of the season reviews, but I think partially it's because Johnson came so hyped. Obviously, he's the fifth overall pick in the draft. Uh, he was one of like four Michigan guys to sign his ELC that week. Uh, or yeah, one of four guys. Um, the other three uh, both had more points in in the kind of their end of season thing but um i don't necessarily think that's a bad thing i think ken johnson came super hyped and unfortunately because we were expecting a lot out of him and not very much out of nick blankenberg when nick blankenberg started to do really well and you know he was really impressing the coaches and uh his teammates the fans people were like well what's what's up with this ken johnson kid but on the flip side he had three points in eight games, in his first eight games as a Blue Jacket, um, and he played a lot of hockey already that year. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get into his his international play in in just a minute, but I'm I'm not upset with how Ken Johnson came into came into the league, and uh, I did a really good episode. If, if you don't mind me saying, with uh, Charlie Ferrari, where we talked about Ken Johnson's debut, and uh, he played a couple more games since then, I think, by the time we actually sat down and recorded. And you can see the progress that he's making. Like, he's such a smart player. Like, you can see him correcting to, oh, this this worked in college. It's not going to work in the NHL. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not, I'm not worried. We're going to get into his... Uh, debut with the Blue Jackets in just a minute, but first I've got to tell you all about rockauto.com because with the ever-increasing number of makes and models of cars, it's basically impossible to stock every single part that every single car needs in your local chain auto parts store, and you've got to go in and talk to someone and they've got to order the part they are going to get the most commission on you've got to leave your car there or you've got to go home you've got to bring it back you've got to pay for the labor like it's a it's a whole shenanigan honestly so stay at home and uh use your phone or your computer to access rockauto.com you can save time and money if you do this uh, rock auto is a family business they've been serving diys for over 20 years and their prices are reliably low no matter who you are. They've got everything from brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, uh, even things like new carpet. If you can put it on or in your car or truck, rockauto.com probably stocks it. So go to the ECG's website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure you are racing locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. So I want to talk a little bit more about Ken Johnson with the Blue Jackets. Um, I am not unhappy with how his debut went from his perspective. I am not concerned, maybe concerned is the right word. Brad Larson started giving him plenty of ice time, and then as the games went on, he was getting less ice time and less ice time. Um, I don't know if I can pull up the, the ice time split here, but um, it's not it's not ideal. Um, you know, it started off pretty, pretty solidly, and then it uh, slipped down and down in the average 
uh, ice time rankings. Let's uh, let's pull up the game logs for his games. Um, yeah, so his first game he played, he played eleven minutes and then ten and a half, fourteen and a half, sixteen and a half, and then it went down to thirteen and a half against Ottawa of all teams. Uh, he only played eight and a half minutes against Edmonton, uh, which I don't know, man. Like that seems like a game that you want. It's meaningless for the Blue Jackets. That seems like a game that you want your guys to play. You want your young guys to play in those games. I think uh, he played twelve and a half against Tampa Bay, then ten against Tampa Bay, and then he played fourteen minutes exactly against uh, the season closer in Pittsburgh. So it's not as dire as I think I thought it was when I first was like, man, he's getting less and less ice time, but I don't know. I hope that that doesn't continue into next season. Honestly, I think Kent Johnson is a guy that you're not going to get anything out of if he's on that fourth line, which he spent a bunch of time on the kind of the third and fourth lines. I don't, I don't get it. That is a guy that you want in your, in your middle six at the very least. Ideally, I think you want him in your top six. I think you want him on the line with Cole Sillinger and Arthur Bjorkstrand, and I think you want to just give them the puck and watch them go. Uh, I think the combination of Johnson and Sillinger is going to be really exciting, and I think uh, put someone like Alex- Alexander, Oliver Bjorkstrand on that line to kind of rein them in a little bit, provide that offensive bump, but also he's so good in transition. He's one of the more underrated two-way players in the league, so he can provide that defense, that defensive um, support that I don't know you're going to get a ton of from Johnson or uh, or Sillinger, although Sillinger did get a lot better uh, as the season went on. Again, we're going to talk about that in his season review, but um, I'm not I'm not worried yet about the the ice time numbers. I am a little worried about the who his line mates were. And I don't want that to continue next season. I think he finished the season, like, his, his line mates were, like, Brendan Gaunt and Carson Meyer, which, like, is fine, but, like, that's... To me, that's not where you want Ken Johnson playing. Even, you know, Ken Johnson in his seventh or eighth NHL game or whatever it is. Like, you want him playing with... Apologies to Brendan Gaunt and Carson Meyer. You want him playing with real NHLers. You want him playing with the guys he's going to be playing with next season, the season after, the season after, in a perfect world, you know? And I just, I don't think it's fair to look at him and be like, well, he only got three points in eight games. I'm like, yeah, because he was getting like 12 minutes a game on average. And also his line mates were fourth liners. They were checking guys. They were guys that whose job it is to not let the other team score, but absolutely no offense is needed or allowed from them. So it's, it's frustrating because I do think Brad Larson has done a really good job this season with putting players in positions to succeed. But for some reason, he didn't extend that to Ken Johnson. And that worries me a little bit. Uh, potentially, I'm being overdramatic. It, it, it's been said. I have been known to be overdramatic on occasion. I think it'll be really interesting to see as training camp starts um, who Ken Johnson is paired with because I think that's going to be a real key to knowing where he's going to be this season. You know, if he gets stuck with the fourth liners, I could see them sending him down to Cleveland to develop, to get more minutes. But like I said, I want him on that second line. I want him playing big minutes and I want him having an impact on the game. And I just don't think he's going to get a chance to do that if his line mates are Brennan Gorth and Carson Meyer. So, uh, that's uh that's kind of my feelings on on how his his very small slate of, of NHL games went this season. Um I do think there were some good good signs in there. Um you know, he's clearly clearly making making a difference. He had of his three points, two of them were on the power play. Uh he only had five shots in those uh not in those eight games or nine games, which again is not uh Super encouraging, but like I said, he's not. I don't think he's going to be a big goal scorer for the Blue Jackets. I think he's going to be the next Jake Voracek, or maybe even better than Jake Voracek. Uh, so that's that's that. Um, in the in a minute, we are going to talk a little bit about how he's doing something that very few teenagers have uh, have ever done before. 
uh, and that is that he's played for Team Canada three times this season. So uh, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first, I've got to tell you all about Built Bar because you know what I love? It's brownies. But I also I don't love eating healthy, but I know that I have to do it. And the best thing about Built Bar is that I get to eat brownies and also eat healthy at the same time because they've got a new creation. It's better than ever, and it is the brownie batter built puff. And uh, yeah, you heard me right, the built puff brownie batter flavor. This takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now on built.com. It is a chocolate covered protein infused marshmallow. It's only got 140 calories. It's got 17 grams of protein. It's only got seven grams of sugar. Tastes exactly like when you are scooping a spatula out of the raw brownie batter when you're a kid like that's it's exactly what it tastes like i don't know what to say it's so good it's so delicious it'll have you forgetting that you are eating a protein bar and like i said it's available right now and you go to built.com and use promo code locked 15 you will get 15 percent off your order so go immediately to built.com get your brownie batter puffs or your birthday cake puffs or whatever you want but it should be the brownie batter puffs Pro code LOCKED15, and you will get 15% off at built.com. So this season, Ken Johnson has played for the World Juniors, the under-20s, which I think he played like two games before the whole thing got cancelled because of COVID, which I feel like shouldn't shouldn't have been surprising to anyone. Uh, played two games, had one goal in those games. Uh, then he went to the Olympics a month later, played five games, for Team Canada, had five points, a goal, and four assists. And he's currently playing for Canada in the World Championships, the adults. Uh, He's got four points in that so far, two goals and two assists. And I believe he's only, he's one of like six teenagers to play for all three um, in the same year. Ken Johnson is doing things that very, very few 19-year-olds have done before, and he's doing it, and he's excelling, I think. Um, I don't know that he's leading... I don't know that he's leading in any of the categories, but the fact that he's been named to all three um, is just a real a real boon, I think. And so when, you know, at the start of the episode, I'm like, you played on five different teams this season. It sounds not great, but then you realise, okay, well, one of them was the University of Michigan, where he you know, had record a record points pace, uh, make his NHL debut at the age of 19, and then played for Canada three times and will likely play for Canada again this summer when the World Championship, the World Juniors that got cancelled will be rescheduled. Uh, I don't know when it is exactly. I think it's like July, June or July, I think. He will likely be playing for the World Juniors team there as well. So... You know, he's doing it. He's doing it all. Um, You know, it's a huge, huge thing to get to play for your country. I think he really has benefited from the no NHLers allowed at the Olympics rule by getting to go to these Olympic Games. You know, it's so hard these days to get named to the Olympics, especially for Team Canada and Team America, because they're just so, so dominant that, you know, he would, there's no way if NHL players had gone, he would not have got a look in. Like, he just wouldn't. Um. And to see him go to the Olympics and and do really well. He had five points in five games. You know, that's not that's not nothing. He uh obviously Canada didn't do super great in the Olympics, but uh he was second on the team in scoring. The only guy ahead of him, well he he tied with Eric O'Dell and Jordan Wheel, but the only guy that scored more points than him in those games was Adam Tambellini, who had seven points in five games. So, you know, again, as as a teenager, he's out here doing this stuff. And it's I think it's just really, really impressive. And so I think, you know, you can look at his NHL debut and be like, yeah, it wasn't very good. He only had three points in nine games or whatever. But then you look at what else he's been doing. You know, he had an almost historically good season at the University of Michigan and then played for Canada three times. I think it's it's. You can't just look at the these nine games and be like, well, he wasn't very good and therefore he had a bad season. Um, and I think that's what a lot of Twitter listeners uh, or Twitter followers, I guess, have uh, have kind of agreed with. Um, so if we go to, to look at the, the poll, uh, he 
almost unanimously, well, 64% of people said that he got a B this season, and I would I would agree. Um, no one said D, 23.5% of people said C, and 11.8% of people said A. Honestly, I could agree with any of those, you know? I was uh, maybe an A-, minus, I think, or a C+. Plus. I think B is definitely the right the right landing spot, but I wouldn't have been mad if the poll had flipped one way or the other, honestly. Um, and again, like just to reiterate, I think this is, this is the start of something really great for Columbus. And we're going to be doing a lot of these season review episodes where we talk about guys that didn't play a lot this season or guys that are really, really young or, you know, guys that didn't really get a chance, but next season they might get a chance, you know, Obviously, Cole Sillinger is going to be on the team next season. Uh, you want to see Alexander Texier back this next season. You want to see um, guys like Liam Foody maybe make the jump back. So uh, I'm not worried about Ken Johnson. I'm really, really impressed with his season as a whole. Even if I would have liked to see him score his first goal as a Blue Jacket this season, I think... I don't know whether he's going to be a Calder contender next season, but I think I would not be surprised at all if uh, if he is. So uh, that's that's kind of it for me today on this special Saturday episode of Locked on Blue Jackets. Uh, I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find this podcast at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. We will be back on Monday to discuss uh, another player. Uh, we're going to be looking at Gus Nyquist this season, this this Monday. Uh, we'll be looking at someone who went from not playing a single game to playing all 82. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion. I know what the Twitter poll is going to say for Gus Nyquist's letter grade, but uh, I will be posting that shortly after I post this episode, so uh, make sure you go over there and vote. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Locked on Blue Jacket is free and available on all podcast platforms and also on YouTube. If you're not subscribed on YouTube, then make sure you head over there and do that uh, basically the right now, immediately, uh, because YouTube is, is the best way to uh, consume this podcast, I think. So uh, go hit the subscribe button over there. The more subscribers I get over there, the happier I am and the better the podcast gets, I think, because a happy podcaster is a good podcaster. So uh, that's just my uh, my two cents. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. And until Monday, make sure you stay locked on.